Hey tribe, so I'm here and we are gonna have our first painting lesson. Um, I wanna say a few things to you before we start and then there's some prep work that we have to do and then we are going to paint uh, together. So, um, a lot of you have voiced to me that either you feel like you're an imposter, you have that imposter syndrome, syndrome as far as uh, who are you to be an artist, um, you have that, you have that nagging thought in the back of your mind that I'm not worthy, uh, and uh, you know what, that stinking thinking, and that's why I'm here. Um, uh, I want to help you realize through the exercises that we're doing that, listen, you are more than enough. I cannot make you believe that though. You have to realize that inside yourself. There's Vincent Van Gogh. The more you, more time you spend around me, uh, you're going to know eventually that Vincent Van Gogh is one of my most favorite artists of all time. And I think one of the reasons that he is my favorite is because that, like me, he has failed so many times. During his life, he only sold one painting, and that painting was enough to buy probably a cheap couch in today's society. Um, he tried and tried and tried and tried to sell he couldn't sell. He, his dad was a Calvinist minister. He um, tried to become a missionary. He, he tried to become a minister. He did so many different things. He had such a big heart. Um, so everything that you've done in your life has led you right up to this moment. Where you are in your life right now is a result of the choices that you've made and is a result of how you have chosen them and the energy around them. I pulled a card, and if you've been in my workshops, uh, you know that um, I pull a card every workshop that I do for every single person, and I have a pendulum here that I use. Uh, if you're interested in, in learning how to use one of those, uh, we'll be more than happy to teach you, and today I'm using um, the Wild Offering Oracle deck. I'll put a link to that if you want to check it out. But anyway, uh, I always go with whatever card I choose. And you see the back. The back is uh, Lord Ganesh here. If you don't know the story of Lord Ganesh, I'll tell you that too. Very, very interesting story. Um, <clears throat> again, I go with whatever card I pull. So the card that I pulled today, I don't know if you can see this or not, but it, the card says loneliness. And when I first pulled this card, I thought, why in the world with the things that we are starting, why in the world would I pull a card that says loneliness? But I want you to listen to what this says. This is for somebody in this group, at least one person. I don't know. All I know is that um, I felt really strong about this. And when there were only two cards left in the deck, my pendulum went crazy when I held it over this card. So this is for one or more of you. Let me read what it says. It says loneliness. When you stop fearing your aloneness, you stop settling for less than you deserve. May I embrace and love my solitude. And that's when kindred spirits can finally come. Isn't that beautiful? So let's get to the uh, bare bones and the foundation of painting. Some of you may have painted before and some of you, some of you may not have ever painted before. You can notice that you can see my light in the reflection of the background of that. Uh, I have just a really simple tabletop easel here and the reason that I have this is so I can record and you guys can see it. But uh, in my workshops, I don't use tabletop easels. We just paint on the table. And it's totally cool and it's totally fine and it does what it needs to do. So you don't have to have one of these easels to be able to be a, to be able to paint. Um, I keep the plastic on here for a reason. Right now, I didn't want to already have it, uh, already opened up. So I want to, I want to tell you about this metaphor that I have. So let's say that this is you, right? You are canvas all wrapped up in plastic. You want to be an artist really badly. You want to create art. You may not think you are worthy. You may think you are an imposter. And when people ask you, uh, do you paint? Instead of saying, yeah, I paint, 
you say, oh, I dabble around, or oh, I've never been, I've never had any formal art lessons, or oh, I try, or what are you doing? You are, number one, you're lowering your vibe, lowering your vibe, you're lowering your energy around those two things. And so this canvas is you. So much potential wrapped up in this canvas, right? We don't know what this painting is going to be. We don't have a clue. The only way we are going to see what this canvas can be, the potential of this canvas, is to unwrap it, take the plastic off of it here, we're going to unwrap it. You have a choice. You could leave this thing leaned up in the corner of your house. Uh, you could choose to keep the plastic on it. But I'm going to guarantee you, until you take this plastic off, yeah, I'll pick that up later. Until you take this plastic off, this canvas is never going to have a chance to reach its full potential. This canvas is you. This is your life. You know, I always say in my post, your life, your heart, your canvas. Well, that is completely true. This is your life. This is your heart and this is your canvas. You have a choice of what you want to create on it, but until you let it go, until you unwrap and try and dig in, you will never know the infinite potential, the infinite possibilities in your infinite potential that you really have. So let's take this canvas as unwrapped now and it has infinite possibilities. I can turn this canvas into anything now because the plastic is off and it's ready to go. I can turn it into a beautiful oil painting if I want to of myself. I could paint somebody else. I could do a Vincent Van Gogh. Again, there's my reference to Vincent Van Gogh because I love him so much. And I could do the Starry Night thing. I could paint this amazing thing of a Starry Night. I could do a Jackson Pollock and I could just sling some paint on there if I wanted to. There's all kinds of things that I can do with this canvas, but until I take that plastic off, there are no possibilities that exist for that canvas. Well, there are. I could paint the plastic, but what's that going to do? It's just going to stain it, right? And when I take the plastic off, it's still going to be the white canvas. It's going to be white and pure. And all of those things, it's like discarding, discarding the plastic, it's like discarding all of those layers of things that have been on us in our life, that stinking thinking that we grow up with, right? Of I'm not worthy and I'll never be an artist and I, I don't know, I, I'll never be able to paint like so-and-so and then so-and-so and so. If you've watched some of my videos, you've seen me uh, talk about the comparison game. Uh-uh, don't even get into it. The, the comparison game is not a place for you. Get out of it. You don't paint like me and you're never gonna paint like me. But I don't paint like you and I'm never going to paint like you because each of us has something unique and special that we are called here to do to this world. I reached you and I resonated with you and you took one of my classes. There are people that will never resonate with me that will jump on your bandwagon and that you will be able to speak to. You'll be able to talk to them. You'll be able to share things with them. Each of us has infinite possibilities inside of us if we are just ready and willing to peel off the layers and to use them. Okay? Okay. Let's get started. A couple of things that I want to show you about a brush. Uh, I use, uh, I'll show you some of, the, some of the brushes that I use. I like this flat. It's just a really small, this is probably about a two inch, a small flat. I got this, I think, at either Walmart or Michaels for probably 99 cents. And I buy uh, probably a couple of these a year. I take really good care of my brushes, and I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, I have uh, these. These are just like uh, nylon brushes. And I want to hold this up to you because I want you to see what I'm talking about. This is a long handle one. This is a short handle one. Now, I want you to look at the silver part. There are rings around. You see those rings? Each one of these has two rings around that silver part. Can you see that? Those rings indicate the quality of the brush. So if you go into Walmart and you buy like a uh, Rose Art or Crazy Art or you know that stuff that's like a dollar. Uh, by the way, I don't want to ever slander a brand, but if you can avoid buying that brand, please don't buy it. It's not worth the money that you pay for it. 
it's probably the least of the least the pigments not very good excuse me the pigments not very good it's not just very good quality paint um, so this is a two ring brush uh, I have some brushes here that I bought when I was in college which was I don't know, 13 years ago um, that I paid you know 30 40 50 bucks because I was taking high level painting classes and those have three, four, and even five rings all the way around them. And that tells you that the quality of the brush is a whole lot higher. So um, I would never buy anything less than a two ring right around here. You got two little rings, even these that you buy at Walmart. If you look up here, there are two rings right here. One, two, right here where the brush goes into the metal, there are two rings. And even on this really cheap one, there are two rings and there's one down here. You don't count the one at the bottom, but you can count the one at the top. But at least always buy a two ring brush. Uh, just about every brush that you come in contact with will goes by this language, goes by this system. And um, most artists don't know that until either they get in art school or somebody tells them, like I've just told you now. Oh, you've been enlightened, right? So now you can buy good brushes. Okay. I've got uh, paper plates here. I just broke out a new paper plate. I usually use them until there's so much dried paint on them that I can't even use it anymore. And then I either uh, try to peel it off and use it for something else. I cut it up and use it for collage or uh, something. Something goes on with it. So I've started with a new one. I want to go over color theory really quick with you all before we start to paint. And um, I want to say to you that you don't have to have a ton of colors to start with. You can just have the basic three colors and you can mix anything that you want to mix from those three basic colors. So I'm going to just put a little bit of this on here and I'm going to show you how the color wheel works. So some of you may already know this. Some of you may not. Another thing, uh, when you open these acrylic uh, tubes, sometimes you have to peel the, this little acrylic deweys off here. Um, and that's really easy to do. This red's almost out. Uh, so let me get the blue. Oh, that's black. Here's the blue. So we've got a little bit back there. We've got blue, red, and yellow, the primary colors, right? So if I take my brush and I paint I would always recommend that if you are painting colors and you're painting a color wheel, you always start with yellow because yellow is the lightest color and your brush is really good and clean and your yellow color is going to be more pure. So I can start with the yellow right here. And I'm going to put a just a little dot of yellow there. Let me make it a little bigger so you can see it. Yeah, you can see that bigger. Then I'm going to rinse my brush out. I always tell my students, my high school students, that when you rinse a brush out, you're going to put the brush all the way to the bottom of the jar, and you're going to paint the bottom of the jar as far as the brush will go down. That way, it gets all of the paint out of these where, it's called the ferrule, where the brush meets the metal. F-E-R-R-E-L-L, -L, ferrule. I'm not sure if that's spelled right. Anyway, so I've got my paper towels here and my... Um, brush is clean, so I'm going to get just a little bit of this red. That's a really good, nice, pretty red. All right, can you see that? I'm going to rinse my brush out again. And now I'm going to get some blue. Okay, I've got the blue. So I've got all of the primary colors. Now the color wheel is really super simple. A lot of people make it out to be something that it's not but it's super simple. This plus this equals this. These are primary colors. The colors that go in next to them are secondary colors. So blue and yellow equal, so there's a little bit of blue. And I'm gonna, when you dip into the paint, you dip in from the very side. Don't put your brush right in to the middle of the paint. You're gonna dip in and we're gonna mix that. And well, my blue is a whole lot more strong than my yellow is, so I'm gonna need a lot more yellow. Blue and yellow is green. And let's put just a little more a little more yellow in there anymore and it's going to start being a blue green. So there's a really nice green. 
Okay, blue plus yellow is green. There's our first primary color. Red plus yellow is, and one tip, when you use red or blue, red and blue have a lot more pigment in them than um, yellow. So you're gonna use a lot less red and a lot less blue and a lot more yellow. So I'll put just a little bit of red right there. Not very much red at all. Rinse my brush out because I don't want to get all that in my yellow. Put it on my paper towel and I'm going to get some, I can already tell you I'm going to need more yellow than that. And we're going to mix that and this is going to make, oh, look how beautiful that orange is. I sing a lot <laughs> when I paint. And I sing a lot in my classroom and I think it's because art just makes me so happy. See that pretty orange? Okay, now I'm going to rinse my brush again. Blue plus red is, right, I can hear you just said it. Blue plus red is purple. Um, I do want to give you one tip when you're making purple. If you have a fuchsia, like a hot pink, uh, let me see if I brought it up here. I think I did. No, maybe I didn't. I'll do this next week. I'll show you how this works. If you use a hot pink instead of a red, and you mix hot pink and blue, it makes a really, really super pretty purple. But you don't have to have that, so you see our purple. Okay, so there's the color wheel. Now, we can either add white or black to make these lighter or darker. Or, or, put that down for a minute. Let me get my primary colors back up here. We can add a dot of the primary colors and when we mix that together, that's going to make a little bit more yellow in there. Remember I told you that with the yellow, you have to have a little bit more. Now, you're going to look at this and this is going to blow your mind because you probably, if you've used primary colors before, I hear my students come up to me all the time and they say, how do you make brown? Well, guess what? I just made brown. Equal colors of the primary colors. Or... Equal parts of the primary colors make brown. Or, if you, colors that are complementary colors mean that they are across from each other on the color wheel. So, blue and orange are complementary colors. They're across the street neighbors, right? Purple is an across the street neighbor. He lives right across the street from yellow. And red lives right across the street from green. So, if I wanted to make my green or my red a little darker, the more natural way to do it is instead of using black, I'm gonna use a little bit of the complementary color. So if I get just a little bit of this red and I mix it in here, oh, that's too much. Of course that's too much, oh, here we go. Now, this is a good lesson because I've mixed too much. Can you see that brown? Again, red is a whole lot stronger and so I mix too much red with it. So I'm going to mix up a yellow, put a little bit more on here. And let me mix a green, a really pretty green. Okay, so there's my really pretty green right there. I'm going to take just a dot of red. And this is going to make an earthy, let's see if I can see that. Yeah, a really nice earthy green going to make kind of a darker green and it looks a little more earthy. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see that really well. You need to experiment with this. So let's try with the orange and the blue. So if I wanted to, if I want to make brown, I'm going to do equal parts of blue and orange. But if I want to just make a darker shade of the blue, I can get just a little bit of orange, just a little tiny bit, and I'm going to mix this into the blue a little bit more now now I don't know if you can see that or not but there is a different shade a different hue of blue let me get a little bit more to see if maybe you can see oh yeah that's a lot, that's a lot better I hope you can see that you see that darker shade of blue right there 
I mixed orange with it. Now look at this orange about the blue that's with it and how it turned it brown, right? Um, I don't know if we have enough. Let's see if we do. So if I, oh yeah, if I mix this orange in and blue, there's way too much blue. Way too much blue, so I've made this beautiful brown. You see that? I'm great at making brown. Okay, so just um, play around with it a little bit. Play around with being able to make um, your primary colors and your secondary colors and then use the across the street neighbors, right? Purple and yellow, red and green, blue and orange. Try adding just a little dab. I'll put some pictures down below this video so you can see and you can kind of look at it and see what I'm talking about. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to cover this canvas. This week we're focusing on freedom. Painting the energy of freedom. So I would, when I start painting, you can paint along with me if you want to or you can just wait until I'm finished. I'm probably going to speed it up when I start painting um, and just so that you don't have to sit and watch the whole thing. Um, and I'm just going to have some fun and I'm going to cover this canvas with paint. Uh, at this point in time, just it doesn't really matter. I just want to get paint. I want to get paint on the canvas. And I start my different paintings uh, different ways, but today I'm going to show you this way. And I'm going to put this paper towel down here because I'm not, I don't want to get my tablecloth really uh, dirty with paint. And I'm going to show you a couple of different things that I do. A couple of different things that I like to do is uh, I'll start with a color that I like and I'll water it down to where it's kind of like a wash. So I'm just going to take some, take some water and just kind of put it. You can use the golden high flow or you can do stuff like this. I'm just going to put it on there. And if it's wet enough, it's going to start to run. Yeah, you can see that. See it start running. I love that. And alternately, you can put it up on the, on the canvas and let it just start to turn around down there. You can just put water on it and let it start to run. Or you could paint. And again, um, it doesn't really matter what brush you're using at this at right now. You're just getting paint on. I would recommend when you start this, this base layer, you would either use white and a color or all cool colors together or all warm colors together. Cool colors blue, purple, and green, or shades of blue, purple, and green, warm colors, red, yellow, and orange, or shades of red, yellow, and orange. There are a couple of uh, colors that I, I absolutely are my favorites, and I use almost every single time I paint. One of them, now this is just my favorite, is this, uh, it's an aqua green. That's one of my favorites. Um, and I use this metallic teal. Yeah, oh, this is metallic cobalt blue. I really like that one. Um, I use that. And then I, my white. Here's my white that I have today. Seriously, this is just cheap, right? This is just a cheap white acrylic paint. Use whatever you have. You don't have to go out and buy a whole bunch of stuff that, you know, you might not be able to afford. So just buy, use whatever you have. We're just going to cover the canvas, right? Now, one of the things I really like to do is spray. Look at that. How cool that is. And I might like that, and I just might want to use it and leave it. But I'm going to dip my, this brush that I told you I really like. I'm going to stop talking now so that I can